From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Namaskar viewers, welcome back to another episode of My India. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and in today's episode, we're going to offer you a glimpse into India's cultures, diversity along with the developments happening in and around the world. Chandigarh, a vibrant city in northern India, pulsated with the fragrance of spring during its recent 52nd Rose Festival. The event showcased a rich array of flowers including over 800 varieties of roses which transformed the garden into a visual and aromatic feast. Take a look. Chandigarh, the capital city of Indian states of Punjab and Haryana, reflects a unique blend of culture and traditions. Besides, its uniqueness is also evident in the diversity of the city. Being a cosmopolitan city, Chandigarh also indulges people of diverse cultures and ethnicities to foster a friendly bond between people by holding fairs and festivals on a regular basis. Authorities in the city recently held the 52nd Rose Festival featuring 829 varieties of roses. Alongside the display of roses, the festival also featured stalls set up by institutes, followed by cultural programs and laser shows. The newly appointed mayor of Chandigarh, Kuldeep Kumar, expressed his joy upon watching the floral display. भारत के अंदर क्या पूरे वर्ल्ड के अंदर आपका कहना बिल्कुल सही है ये रोज फेस्टिवल सब कुछ को सबको पता है कि बहुत ज्यादा बड़ा चंडीगढ़ का त्यौहार होता है और फेस्टिवल ना हो के एक जैसे हम दिवाली और दशहरा मनाते हैं इस तरह से हम चंडीगढ़ का एक त्यौहार है रोज फेस्टिवल वो मनाते हैं और इस टाइम जो है मनाने का कारण यही है कि इस टाइम रोज बहुत ज्यादा खिलते हैं और रोजों की सारी वैरायटीयां यहां पर मौजूद हैं और बहुत मनमोहक दृश्य यहां पर देखने को मिल रहे हैं और बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है the three-day annual festival garnered thousands of people who came to rejoice in the festive vibe with their loved ones. People also clicked pictures and selfies during the event. Additionally, they were also danced to the music of traditional folk songs with the performers. जैसे मैंने सर यहाँ पे स्टेप इन किया तो सबसे पहले जो एंट्रेंस पे हर एक रोज के बारे में इतनी डिटेल में बता रखा है कितने टाइप्स के रोजेस होते हैं इट वाज अ वंडरफुल एक्सपीरियंस आई हैव गेट इन देयर हमने जो यहाँ पे इतने ब्यूटीफुल स्टॉल्स लगा रखे हैं सभी इंस्टीट्यूट्स आ रखे हैं यहाँ पे सारों ने अपनी अपनी आर्ट फॉर्म को इतने अच्छे से रिप्रेजेंट कर रखा है हम उनसे पूछते हैं कि आपने कितने किस तरह बनाए तो वो अपनी एक्सपर्टीज हमसे शेयर करते हैं अपना एक्सपीरियंस शेयर करते हैं तो वो सुन के बहुत ही ज्यादा हमें बहुत अच्छा लगता है आठ साल से हम यहाँ पे आ रहे हैं हमारा बेसिकली हम टू ईयर से हम यहाँ पे परफॉर्म करें पर हमारे सीनियर्स जो हैं वो आठ साल से यहाँ पे बूथ लगा रहे हैं। A major highlight of the 52nd Rose Festival 2024 was the zero waste zone, focusing on stability, creativity, novelty and inclusivity. Additionally, various stalls set up by self-help groups underscored the commitment to stability and community empowerment. It's a very lively place and Chandigarh's beauty is a beautiful rose festival. It seems like the whole Chandigarh has been filled with roses and to make it a festival. Everyone is happy and happy to make it a festival. Such festivals not only provide a glimpse into India's cultural vividness, but also nurture a strong bond among people. Away from the chaotic lifestyle, they give individuals a break to restart their life. Moving on, the rich country of India is dwelling on the path of development, taking long strides to emerge powerful and resourceful in almost every sector. 
In today's episode, we'll give you a glimpse of India's journey to become self-reliant as the country develops its first indigenous hovercraft boat which can run both on land and water. The fact that the woman named Suprita is the creator of this masterpiece in Tamil Nadu state also stands out as a shining example of women's empowerment. Take a look. Today, whether they are semi-high speed trains running on railway tracks, smartphones, modern weapons available with the army, or satellites being launched by ISRO in space, everything is being manufactured in India. The country today is becoming self-reliant in almost every field as a result of the government's concerted efforts like the Make in India or Made in India campaigns. An instance testifying to this campaign has been a female engineer who has designed the country's first indigenous hovercraft boat which can run on both land and water and is currently floating in Sulur Lake of Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu. The country's first indigenous hovercraft has been designed by Suprita Chandrasekhar and is named as Pivot Craft. It can run in any area without any hitch. There is a big and a small fan installed behind this hovercraft with the help of which it runs at high speed. Suprita is not only a capable engineer and designer of this hovercraft but also a successful entrepreneur. When we tried uh, to take a survey if, if India did have a hovercraft, who, I mean, if there's anyone who's manufacturing in India, we didn't find anyone who's manufacturing in India. So we thought that we, we should, you know, put it in the, in the right uh, time so that people will be benefited, the whole country will be benefited. And when it's in Make in India scheme, it will be much more effective for many of us. Uh, there are many hovercrafts all over the world, and uh, uh, but you know if you have to import it, it will cost you duty, transportation, everything else. So instead, if you want to uh, procure it, uh, the product from us, then it should be like you no know, make in India scheme. They would avoid duty, transportation, all these would be benefited for the whole country. So that's where we thought you know we'll bring about this uh, product. Hovercraft can be used for rescue operations as well as in disaster affected areas during storms and floods. At the same time, it can also prove useful for the Indian Army, Navy and NDRF. The speed of this hovercraft can reach up to 100 km per hour on road surfaces and 80 km per hour on water. So it's, uh, the craft is uh, commonly known as a hovercraft and it's an air cushion vehicle so it's uh, fully amphibious, it can travel over smooth ground surfaces and uh, any water of any depth uh, really so um, that amphibious capability means that it's really useful for things like search and rescue, uh, for border security work um, and even for um, assisting where there's not much infrastructure uh, can be used to carry people or carry cargo um, in areas where the facilities might not be readily available to a boat. The successfully tested indigenous hovercraft is expected to play a crucial role in national defence and emergency response. This marks a major achievement for India's innovation sector. Moreover, the past years witnessed India's rapid movement towards self-reliance, resulting in a decrease in the country's dependency on foreign countries for imports like military equipment, railway engines, vaccines, mobile phones and other electronic devices. This is just one example of how India is positioning itself as a rising global power. Similar instances of innovation and advancement can be found across various sectors. And now, some of the stories that made news recently.
car enthusiasts were awestruck in Jaipur as classic cars hit the streets at the 25th Vintage and Classic Car Exhibition and Drive. The event was organized by Tourism Department of Rajasthan Government and Rajputana Automotive Sports Car Club in Jaipur. The spectacular event saw the participation of around 120 vintage and classic cars. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi revealed the astronauts who will be part of the country's ambitious crewed space mission Gaganyaan. मुझे खुशी है कि आज इन एस्ट्रोनट से मिलने उनसे बातचीत करने और उन्हें देश के सामने प्रस्तुत करने का सौभाग्य मुझे मिला The Gaganyaan mission is aimed at developing a human habitable space capsule that will carry a three-member crew into an orbit of 400 km for three days before returning to safety in a planned splashdown in the Indian Ocean. Modi reviewed the human space flight program and bestowed astronaut wings to astronaut designates and Indian Air Force pilots, Group Captain Prashant Balakrishnan Nair, Group Captain Ajit Krishnan, Group Captain Angad Pratap and Group Captain Shubhanshu Shukla. All four were trained at the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Russia. About 90.23 billion Indian rupees has been allocated for the mission, which comes after the space agency's historical landing of its Chandrayaan-3 craft on the lunar South Pole. The space agency has previously said its Vikram Sarabhai Space Center had successfully tested systems for stabilizing the crew module. and safely reducing its velocity during re-entry. The Gaganyaan mission has been expected to launch from the country's main spaceport in Sri Harikota before 2024, although a schedule had not been announced. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi went underwater to offer prayers at a Hindu temple which is believed to be submerged under the water. According to Hindu scriptures, Dwarka city was created by Lord Krishna before being submerged under water after his departure from planet Earth. Modi dived into the sea and offered a peacock feather wand at temple remains lying under sea which is considered auspicious by Hindus. The Prime Minister inaugurated a grand temple in northern Ayodhya city last month, fulfilling a decades-long BJP pledge, months ahead of general elections due in May this year. Moving on, the state of Tripura in India is often known for its intermingling culture and unique traditions. and has long been one of the epicenters of communal harmony in the spirit to combat the critical shortage of blood people from diverse communities extended their arms to the initiative called by the tripura government in agartala city let's have a look india's northern eastern state of tripura boasts a vibrant culture shaped by diverse communities and their traditions The state apart from its tribal traditions, festivities and eccentric handcrafted products is also considered one of the epicenters of communal harmony where communities share a common thread of peace and brotherhood. In a heartwarming display of unity and generosity, people from all walks of life join hands in Tripura's Agartala to fight the critical shortage of blood. The call to action initiated by Tripura government saw an overwhelming response from citizens across the state transcending the boundaries of caste, community and religion. Blood donation se bada kuch bhi nahi hota hai. Dekhiye prithvi mein sab daan hi mahan hote hain. Kuch bhi aap daan karo, daan punna ko mahan hi mana gaya hai. Par ye jo rakt daan isse mahan isse आ, कुछ ज्यादा नहीं हो सकता है क्योंकि आपसे शरीर आपके शरीर से निकला हुआ एक एक बूंद रक्त 
दूसरों को जीवन देता है दूसरों को जीवन दान देता है तो उससे महान कुछ भी नहीं होता है ये एक संप्रदाय का कार्यक्रम हो सकता है पर हमने मुझे यहाँ देखा बहुत हिंदुओं ने भी यहाँ पर इस कार्यक्रम में उन्होंने भाग लिया है वो लोग भी ब्लड दे रहे हैं इस कार्यक्रम को सामने रखते हैं यही भारत है जो सबको सर्व धर्म समभाव जो सब धर्म को सम्मान सिखाता है भारतवर्ष है ये अच्छा लग रहा है जो मोदी जी के दिखाए हुआ जो एक रास्ता है कि सबका साथ सबका विकास सबको लेकर आगे बढ़ना उसका एक छवि मुझे आज यहाँ आकर मुझे मिला है The acute scarcity of blood units which poses a severe risk to patients in need of urgent care prompted the appeal to public's inherent kindness and sense of duty towards one another. Various sections of society including educators, religious leaders and members of social and political organizations mobilized to organize a series of blood donation camps. As an outcome these camps reached the remotest corners of Tripura The event which took place at the historic Goshia Jama Masjid in Indranagar Agartala not only contributed to the blood bank's replenishment with over 50 units of blood but also strengthened the bonds between different religious communities देखिए आप हम लोग अभी तक 40 लगभग हो गए यूनिट दे दे इसमें हिंदू मुस्लिम सब ब्लड डोनेट विलिंग ने किया है तो बहुत अच्छा लगता है As Tripura confronts its challenges head on the collective action serves as a beacon of hope and solidarity proving once again that humanity transcends all barriers in times of need And now some of the stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Japan is becoming a tourism kingdom and is looking for more upscale accommodations. Every year 8.4 million foreign visitors arrived at Kansai International Airport. It is regarded as Western Japan's largest entrance. At Kansai International Airport, JCB is the only original international card issued in the country and offers visitors dynamic, profitable services. ここでは JCB 会員を対象として大阪や京都へお得に移動してもらいたいというふうに考えています。例えばリムジンバスでは 10% オフで乗車券を購入することができます。Also there are convenient services for travelers. The Kansai International Airport provides various services and hospitality with the help of JCB. Thanks to its partnership with JCB, Kansai International Airport offers foreign visitors satisfaction and positive memories. The Japanese credit card company JCB has come up with Osaka town's level of satisfaction and hospitality. Foreign guests relocate to the town in order to enjoy a stay after landing. Osaka 市内においては JCB カードをお持ちいただくとショッピング、宿泊施設、飲食店といったところでベネフィットが受けられます。訪日客におもてなしをしたいという思いが一致している加盟店様が目的地に広がっています。Osaka is popular for sightseeing. At this hotel, card holder visitors can get a big discount. Osaka is also known as the city of satisfactory eating. That is what makes Osaka so unique. Visitors can enjoy a delicious meal and a substantial discount at this restaurant. The long-standing Kintetsu department store is located in Abeno Harukasu. It is anticipated to draw tourists from overseas. because it has one of the biggest sales floor areas in the country as japan moves towards becoming a tourism kingdom jcb is stepping up its hospitality for guests from other countries
Colombia recovered 77 pre-Hispanic artifacts that belonged to a German collector after a repatriation process that lasted for over one year. In the 70s, a man in Germany lived here in Colombia and bought these pieces. Eh, precolombinas, luego se las llevó a Alemania y sus herederos eh, a través de una conversación con el consulado en Frankfurt decidieron eh, hacer la devolución voluntaria de estas piezas. The relics which include ceramic jugs and jars arrived in Colombia on February 19 on board the presidential plane. They were taken decades ago when a German buyer got them in Colombia in 1974. The Colombian consulate in Frankfurt received the pieces in August 2023 before returning to the country. And lastly, let's take you to the Koraput city of India's Orisha state, which recently held a watercolor art camp at the heights of Diomeli, the highest mountain peak of Orisha, garnering artists from across the state who came to show their artistic talent by depicting paintings on the canvases. Let's have a look. Odisha, a vibrant state dreaming with diverse cultures, rich tribal traditions and unique languages never fails to surprise visitors. This is one such state in India that surprises you with its evident beauty every time you dig a little deeper to understand its social and cultural dynamics. Keeping with the essence of the cultural state, the local administration occasionally organizes events to remind the world of its uniqueness. Recently, the Lalit Kala Academy, in collaboration with the district administration, held a watercolor art camp for artists from across the state. The camp culminated in a breathtaking display of artistic talent with participants showcasing their skills by painting on the peak of Diomeli, the state's highest mountain in Koraput city. Uh, Deomali is a beautiful place where the artist and nature are joined with nature. This opportunity we have given to Lalit Academy. I would like to say that I would like to give the first to the Odisha government that this art camp, watercolor art camp, is the first time on the Deomali top mountain. This is a very beautiful place for the artist and the showhagya. Uh, artist uh, nature ke saath judi hui aur kuch neya kaam um, aur uh, neya experiment kiya hai over 15 talented artists from odisha state were invited to participate and show their artistic skills these paintings of theomeli were said to be exhibited at the art gallery in koraput during the event, artists were witnessed sketching nature while depicting elements like mountains, sky, bushes and trees. Today uh, we have did a watercolor camp at uh, Debmali, the top mountain of Odisha. And uh, this is on uh, Koraput district. So Odisha Lalit Kala Academy, Odia Bhasa Sahitya Sanskrit Bhag, Odisha Sarkar ke taraf se ye camp organized kiya gaya hai. District Administration ka sahajog se. We have selected around 15 artists from different part of the uh, Odisha and they are doing beautiful paintings, watercolor paintings on canvas because this is beautiful nature where uh, I have seen the first time this place is looks excellent scenario and excellent natural beauty. So they are all artists are creating their beautiful uh, paintings and canvas and I hope many tourists they will enjoy it and also we will exhibit these paintings different districts and different uh, gallery also. Today also we are exhibiting in our Lalit Kala Academy Gallery. An event like this not only promotes the regional beauty but also acts as a platform for talented artists to stand out and shine. And that's all we have for you this week. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and it's a goodbye from the entire production team.